Welcome to the big booth recorded at Stumptown Station, Matthews, North Carolina, USA. My name is Brian Lewis. I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes, learning more about craft cocktails, and we really do appreciate you joining us both on the podcast and here on YouTube. I uh, hope that you're uh, we're a little bit of a diversion for you from the day-to-day grind. Plus, you might learn something new. You never know. That's hard. Um, it is it is episode two. Episode two. Episode we're ready to go. Two, two episodes. Ah, That's ah, right. ah. Uh, we haven't been canceled yet. My, my prevailing theory is because we record these a few weeks ahead of time and episode one hasn't released yet so they haven't had time to cancel us so we're doing really well we we are damn yeah. the torpedoes full speed ahead right. that's what's happening so with <laughs> me is my co-host he needs no introduction but he's getting one because he's got a great agent and it's in his contract it's uh he's the author of the best-selling self-help book the power of procrastination he's also recently named the scion prince of ohio shout out to big took for that one he's the co-owner of stumptown station a master mixologist makes Poor decisions and poor choices and friends like me, Brandon Mills. What's up, hello, bud? Hello, hello. How are you, you like that one? I like that. I like that. That one was uh, professionally I, uh, sent to me, yeah. I'm, yeah, I actually am trying to finish that book, but it's going to be a while. So, yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate it. It's Yeah, I keep trying to get around to it. It's just not working out. So this week, <clears> so last week we started, or last episode, we started with, you know, we dove right into a cocktail spotlight. It was the Moscow Mule. Yeah. And, and that was a great introduction to what the podcast is going to be, kind of the flow of what we're doing. So now we can start with the basics, right? This... This one sort of feels like a like an intro class to cocktails, right? Yeah, like, so yeah, sort of a 101, if right. you will. Yeah. So Cocktail yeah, so once you've left the frat house basement, you put down the handle of Jack Daniels and you're ready to go in search of something, you know, a little more and you discover cocktails. Well, then before you can get into the advanced studies of like making cocktails and flipping bottles or, you know, I don't right. know what, whatever it is that, that, that master mixologists do, um, you got to have that base layer of knowledge, right? It's like the sauce on a pizza or that bottom layer of uh, pasta on the lasagna. Yeah, there you go. I got there a lot of food analogies. I like it. actually, today. and we make a lot of food analogies when we teach cocktails we, too. We may need a food sponsor. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. Go. Anybody that would like to do that, Gracie's. And so this <laughs> week we're going to get into. <laughs> so uh, this week we're getting into the first layer, and and this is a great basics class in cocktail, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and we're getting on a discussion of the basics. It's called the four parts of every cocktail. So how does this master's class start, Professor? So this is like I said, like basically a one hundred and one level. Uh, idea. Okay. So when we, when we hire new bartenders, one of the things that we do is we bring them in and actually teach them this. Um, so when I started this class out, basically what it is, is how to be your best home bartender, right? How to be the best bartender at your next party, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's pretty simple in, in our world, every, or the way we teach it, I should say, is every cocktail has four parts. You have liquor, water, bitter, and sweet. Okay. That's it. Everything that we do, we build around that thought process. All right. Now, liquor and water will balance each other out. Bitter and sweet will balance each other out. So, so. balance, but not cancel. Correct. We're okay. never looking for like a... It's, it's interesting because we're never looking for a cancellation. However, when I teach this course, there actually are moments where adding certain things will actually cancel out certain parts of it. Um, there are times okay. when we make cocktails where... Mm -hmm. You'll put the liquor in. You can smell the, you know, a margarita is one of the things we're going to talk about. Today. Right. <clears throat> so you put the liquor in. You smell the tin. Well, it smells like tequila. You add ice. It still smells like tequila. You add lime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting better as you go, right? Um, but you add lime juice. Okay, well, it still smells like tequila, but now there's lime juice. Right. But once you put everything together, you add that bitter ingredient, whatever it is, or that sweet ingredient, whatever it is that you're going to be, mm -hmm. this wild thing happens where the smell is almost gone. You're actually almost going for nothing it's not a cancellation it's a balance so, so this is really so, interesting so you would be scientific canceling thing. the scent so much not so much the the mixture itself. right or i okay. guess i guess you could put it as changing it to what a margarita okay. should smell like right. or whatever that is no, that and a sense. lot of what we do in cocktailing actually you'll see bartenders really good bartenders you'll see them sort of sniff and taste as they go because mm -hmm. Our, what we do is five senses, you know what I mean? It's not just flavor, it's smell, presentation, you know, all of that. The, the sound of the shaker, yeah, everything's there, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the cold of the glass and all that. I mean, okay. you know, and as we talked about in the, in the uh, Moscow Mule episode, just having that, that chill right, right. on the, the cold glass. Right, copper yeah. mug, right. Um, so it all makes such a big difference. So, okay. uh, so the cool part about uh, the first two ingredients, liquor and water, um, water obviously comes in the form of ice on these cocktails that we're doing. Water comes in the form of ice. Okay. So we throw in tequila. We will add our ice in. Now, shaking and stirring cocktails. Well, how do I know when to do one or the other? So um, really easy to remember. If you're supposed to shake it, shake it. And if you're supposed to stir it, stir it. 
Um, very easy rules to remember. <laughs> Um, but realistically, it's about the amount of water that you want to add. Okay. So as you're shaking a cocktail, that's a very violent process. You're mm -hmm. breaking up the ice and in doing so you're increasing as the ice breaks, you're increasing the surface area of the ice. So it melts faster in the cocktail. So you're adding the water component. You're, yeah. To the and cocktail. you're adding okay. more water to the cocktail. Sure. So as you're stirring a cocktail, you're not doing quite as much, you know, you're not being so violent. So you're okay. just kind of adding that in and blending as opposed to so it's violently more, combining. It's a more peaceful approach. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Gotcha, a gotcha. little more elegant, but not, not any less well, fun. I don't know. I've seen people stir cocktails and not always that elegant. <laughs> That's no. true. Yeah. That is a skill in and of itself, which we'll talk about. <laughs> okay. We'll talk about in another episode how hard that actually can be. All right. Um, but... Uh, so anyway, so those those parts cancel each other out. And the reason why they cancel each other out is because when you think about bourbon, and we'll talk about bourbon here in a future episode as well, mm -hmm. um, but when you think about bourbon, bourbon can only have very specific things added to it. One of those things is just water, right? So you get your alcohol off the still at, let's call it 128 proof, right? Okay. And then you add water in based on the volume. You add water in and it lowers the proof. So that's how you get an 80 proof bottle of whiskey, right? Gotcha. Or bourbon or whatever you're doing. Okay. Same thing with tequila, vodka. It's all the same. So that process, that's where I say liquor and water balance each other out. So gotcha. with that, uh, you're lowering the quote unquote burn of the cocktail. So a lot of people think, well, I want, I want extra liquor in my cocktail because yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Who <laughs> so, doesn't want that? Yeah. Right. But um, if you ask for, you know, the bartender to give you a little extra or whatever, and you're doing craft cocktails, mm -hmm. well, now you're just stepping on the recipe, right? So it would be you're like making things out of balance. Yeah. So okay. it would be like your your plate of spaghetti, right. but smothering it in sauce. Right. So the sauce is the best part. Uh, yeah. But you're smothering it in sauce. So right. now it's it's too much of one particular thing. Right. Right. So. Um, you know, and so anyway, so then we go from there and we balance those things out. So we find a proof that we like in our specific drink, not okay. necessarily with our starter bottle, but in our specific drink. Then we move on to bitter and sweet. Okay, so we use a simple syrup, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we make these cocktails. We use a simple syrup uh, that we make here in-house. We use fresh lime and fresh lemon. So uh, our lime and lemon juice mixture, we make a, what we call a house sour. Okay, so it's it's not sour mix that you buy at the store. Okay, so it's now, your own homemade sour. Yeah, yeah, super. But it's just we're going to get back to that. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. really good. It's yeah. super simple too. It's just lemon, lime, and simple syrup. And that's something you can do at home. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we are yeah. so getting yeah. back into yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, if you've got a, a lemon, a lime, and a squeezer, you're just you know you can do it. So, um, but with that, those two things cancel each other out. So we're going to add lemon and lime juice. We're going to add in a little bit of simple syrup, but we don't want it too tart and we don't want it too sweet. So we will add those ingredients together to find that balance. Now, it's not always one-to-one. -one. That's where it kind of gets difficult. A one-to-one -one cocktail of anything would be just fine. You know, one, one liquor, you know, the equivalent amount of ice, you know, one measure of sour mix and one measure of simple syrup, you'd be fine. Mm -hmm. um, it would be an okay cocktail. The point of this is the craft of what we do is finding the balance of everything that we come back to, where I say everything balances each other out. Some weird parts about it come in. Um, we don't count orange juice. Even though a citrus is always bitter, we don't count orange juice as a bitter. We count it as a sweet because it is okay. a very sweet thing. Okay. Grapefruit juice obviously counts as a bitter. Then you have you know bitters in and of itself. Angostura so there's bitters. nuances to all of these things that may fit in one or more categories. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, gotcha. so, so while it is a simple thing, it takes learning i guess it takes experience right sure so just making them repeatedly mm -hmm. is the best way to go about it because i can attest and i know that this is true and i would challenge anybody out there your first cocktail that you make is not going to be nearly as good as your fifth sixth or seventh especially if you do them in a row that seventh cocktail is going to be spectacular, spectacular. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, so. <laughs> I have proven that theory yeah, yeah it works out really sure. well works out really well i might prove that when we wrap this show you know? <laughs> exactly yeah. so yeah that's our i mean a very basic very high level overview for the purposes of our time frame right um but yeah that's the, our four parts of a cocktail so we teach everybody that um the wild part with that is is that now you have and we'll show it here in a moment but now you have the recipe for a margarita a whiskey sour a mm. daiquiri vodka gin sours all sure. that stuff now you can actually go from there 
you start getting and then into tweak off on yeah. your own to make things that are your own personal flavor. Yeah, you start getting okay. into the the mixology of it when you say, "Oh, now I want to try Saint Germain elderflower liqueur," or I want right. to try, you know, our you know our Oak City amaretto out of Raleigh, right. North Carolina. So, okay, Anthony, hello. But uh, yeah, yeah hi I, Anthony. I mean, yeah, good to see you, buddy. Um, but it's a it's a great ingredient that we use uh, in some of our cocktail, uh, many of our cocktails, because sure. it adds a sweetness right. without having to use sugar. Okay. So now granted, obviously there's sugars and, and things that are made with right, distilling. Right, right. But, there's all the technical um, details. Science nerds stop. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that amaretto for, for example, is one of my favorites because I was not an amaretto drinker, but I love Oak city. So it just ah. turns out, and there's so many things that that kind of goes with, right. Of, Oh, I don't like this. I don't like coconut rum. No, no, no. You don't like this specific coconut right. rum. Right. Or you don't like coconut rum by itself. Right. Which is exactly. Yeah. God awful. Yeah. Over ice. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's just about finding the balance for all these things that, number one, you enjoy. You know, mm-hmm. I, we have a friend of ours down the road, uh, Chris down at the Loyalist, always says to me, you know, the best palette in the world is the one that you own because it's yours. Right. So it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks. As long as you can make your favorite cocktail, then you've nailed it. In so, my opinion. so you start with these this these basics. Mm-hmm. You you know that there's four primary categories to a cocktail, and now you can you can kind of branch out from there as you grow. But this is the the foundation lesson that, yeah, that everybody would need yeah. to learn as they absolutely. go. Absolutely. And then you're going into higher level things after you do the four parts. You find this cocktail that you really enjoy. Right. Now you're going into higher level things of mm-hmm. okay, well, what garnishes do I use? Or right. well, how do you know the process of making it? What mm-hmm. tools should I use to actually make this? That actually make a big right. difference, you know, or uh, even like the extra flavorings or something that like you like you guys do yeah, with the absolutely. cinnamon old fashioned, yep. where there's actually you know I don't know if there's cinnamon in it or not, but I know you do the cinnamon stick, which adds the smoke, which yep. is, you know, yeah, and, we then, actually, and that adds a whole new component. Yeah, and we actually we smoke a cinnamon stick for that cocktail because the cinnamon stick itself, the mm-hmm. smoke is so sticky that it binds to the inside. And I know it's weird to think of sticky smoke, but it binds to the inside of the glass. And it adds a cool flavor and And nuance. Yeah. And yeah. the whole bar smells like cinnamon, which right, is nice. Which is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what that's what we do when when you know, yeah. Well, and so one of the other things that we talk about with uh with with water in the cocktail is what's actually in the glass, right? right. As far as okay, we've put ice in our shaker, we've shaken things up, but what actually goes in the glass? So you'll see, you know, rocks ice Mm -hmm. just regular ice cubes right you'll see crushed ice you'll see blended at times Mm -hmm. you'll see a large cube you know so all of those things are designed to add water at a certain rate as you enjoy your cocktail so many 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 cocktails are poured over rocks just because that's what we design them for right Mm -hmm. but old fashions manhattans all those kind of things once we make them, we want them to taste the way that we've poured them, not really change as you hold the glass. Not right? have it diluted too quickly. Correct, yeah. Okay, gotcha. And that's why sometimes we serve cocktails in certain stemware or blah, 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 right. blah, blah. So you can see how we and go from 101. we'll get into with the tools. Yeah. We'll get into the glassware and right. everything. But that's the main reason why there's a block or an ice ball or something in it. Correct. Is so that it, it, it adds the water more slowly. Right. Again, it's all about the surface area of the ice melting okay. for the water component. Now, we could do multiple episodes on ice. I mean, it's ice is such an important component. Especially the do. organic ice. Yeah, the organic fresh yeah, ice. Yeah, right. we, we make it in-house. Uh-huh. Um, so, <laughs> it's homegrown. Um, yeah, homegrown. <laughs> um, but it's such an important ingredient, and it's so overlooked at so many places because right. everybody thinks open bar, buy ice maker, check both things. Well, hopefully in reverse. Mm-hmm. But I'm ready to go. Well, right. we actually spent, uh, my business partner Bob and I, we actually spent almost a week finding an ice maker that we liked and drove this poor girl crazy right. as we made her bring us ice samples to the point where they said, come to the warehouse. They had all of their ice machines plugged in. Right. And we drank in a warehouse where we tried all to the ice. To get the one that makes just the right Correct. ice. Correct, yeah. Because because you'll have, uh, and I'm, I'm on a tangent here, and it's, I don't even, no, no, you no, may keep it, you may not. Tangent. But yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the you'll have ice that's, Hotel ice, right, is the right. circles. The circles sure. with the hole in the middle. Right. Well, think about how much you're adding surface area, right? Now we have the outside of the ice, the top, the bottom, and, and the, the middle. Yeah. Right, right, right. Then you have the ice that has the divots in the center. Think mm-hmm. every restaurant, every, right. you know, I'm not going to say the name of a restaurant because no, that no, would no. be bad. But Let's not do every, that. Any, more, most restaurants oh, that have restaurant. that ice. Yeah, that okay. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, but again, you have that big divot in the center that's going to 
at ice, right? Right. So one of my favorite types of ice, the and I will say that the Sonic Ice, everybody knows the mm-hmm. Sonic Ice. Um, one of my favorite types of ice. That's great. Okay. Um, because it melts quickly in a mm-hmm. cocktail that you want it to melt quickly in. Right. So you can get, you know, for example, maybe a pina colada or something like that. You can get that really great blend of heavy flavors because the the drink itself will stand up over the watering down. Right. And you can use that that kind of ice without ruining your cocktail. Does this make the drink change? I mean, I, it sounds like it's a yes, but it changes over time. So you serve the drink. Now the drink is in one state. And as I'm sitting there drinking the drink, okay, maybe not me, a normal person that <laughs> sips at a normal rate is drinking the drink. It, it, it changes the drink over time, so it makes it more of an experience drinking this drink. Yeah, and it'll, it will dilute. Everything's going to dilute, right. and it's but, based but on the speed. I guess what I'm saying yeah. is, as it dilutes, there's a plan for how this thing is tasting. Yes, all the way um, that is that is very high level cocktailing and mixology. Okay. I would say, Sorry, but I'm yeah, but no, no, you're fine. Yeah. I think it's great. We actually have um, a cocktail that I got from a buddy of mine that run, uh, Ollie over at Great Wagon Road. Right. Um, two and, mentions in two episodes. Ollie. Yeah, that's right. Two that's mentions. Right. Um, but. Uh, yeah, we have a cocktail that we got from him uh, called the Novocaine, and it's absolutely wonderful because it really is designed to change flavors three times as you enjoy it. So it's really a wild cocktail, really a cool thing. I smell a feature coming up. Yeah, right. Yeah, that one sounds like one I would like to taste. Yeah, it's a really whether good it's one. on camera or not. Right. You know? Yeah, it's a all great right. Cocktail. So when we head over to the bar now, how are what are we what are we what's our plan when we head over to the bar with our with our four ingredients? We're going to make a few drinks and kind of show examples of how this. Yeah, works? Yeah, it's actually far simpler than it sounds um, okay. because we we've kind of gone off on because right now I'm yeah. kind of yeah just yeah. swimming in the information. Yeah, right? seeing it, and we'll keep it very simple as we make. The the cocktails um seeing it happen you go oh okay that makes a lot more sense so we basically could make three cocktails all at the same time and then just add liquor and change the name of the cocktail which is really kind of the cool part for me that i think is so much fun is that as we change it out we have a daiquiri that becomes a margarita that becomes a whiskey sour very very quickly and all that you've subbed out is the liquor. Right. Yeah. That's co- that's called a tease. That's right. So that's what's coming up. We're going to head over to the bar here in just a minute. We're going to see some examples of the four parts of a cocktail. We're going to do like what Brandon said, you know, and, and tease a few drinks and uh, and show you how to make them so you can do it at home. Plus, we're going to learn some more about these mixes because I kind of want to learn about the sour mix yeah, and how absolutely. you can make it at home. So that's coming up right after the news break. Hang out. Hey, it's Brian from the Big Booth Podcast. I hope you enjoyed episode one. Episode two drops this week. And here's what's happening this week, March 1st, 2022. Trivia is coming up Wednesday. Another opportunity for you to see if you're smarter than Scott. We've also got live music coming up Friday night. It's Todd Johnson of Todd Johnson and the Revolvers. But he's by himself, so it's going to be Todd Johnson unarmed. We're going to go with that. Then Saturday night, we've got Jeff and Stevie Gates from the Jeff Gates Band. And I'm going to be sitting in playing bass guitar with him. Uh, that's coming up Saturday night. We've got the cocktail bracket. It starts really soon. Follow us on social media to find out about that and the St. Patrick's Day and everything else that we've got going on here at Stumptown Station. And if you haven't checked it out yet, check out the podcast, The Big Booth by Stumptown Station on your favorite podcast provider. We'll see you there. Hey, we're back on The Big Booth by Stumptown Station, and we're behind the bar again for the second part of our four parts of a cocktail uh, uh, episode that we've got going on here. So, Brandon, you have some uh, exciting things going on here. Yeah, some fun stuff. So, as we've talked about, I have my ice back here. Okay. Um, So, I've got ice ready. Uh, We've got our liquors pulled out. We also have our lemon lime and our simple syrup. Okay. uh, With the four parts of the cocktail, we'll start, as we had talked about earlier, we'll start with the margarita. So, we're actually going to start with our tequila. Uh, I'm using Luna Azul. Um, This is actually their uh, uh, Añejo. Uh, You can use whatever it is that you enjoy. Again, your palate's the best one, so whatever it is that you enjoy. All right. I just happen to really like this particular tequila. Uh, so we'll start with this, add a little ice to our shaker. We'll do our lemon lime, so I'll tell you how we do our house sour and a little mm. bit of our simple syrup as well. So I'll go ahead and start with Yeah, I'm my, gonna get to that, but I won't, you know, I'm like, yeah. make the drink first. <laughs> right. you know I mean, priorities, dude. So I'll go ahead and start with, uh, we'll do an ounce and a half, a full measure for us. All right. Do an ounce and a half of our tequila. And in the last episode, we covered the two sides of the jigger because, yeah. you know, yeah. I, two was, ounces and one I ounce. was curious. That's right. Then we'll go ahead and add some ice in here because we want to, again, balance, right? Okay. So about a scoop and a half for us, just enough to cover the liquor up on the inside of the, uh, on the, inside of the shaker. Now, okay. if you smell that, it just smells like tequila, as we it had does. talked about. 
it's just it does. Smells like it tequila. smells like sadly, a delicious tequila shot. Yeah, sadly, yeah. it's one of the things you can't get on the show, but, you know, we smell it here, so we'll keep you informed. Right. Uh, now, we're going to go to our simple syrup. We use in our bar what we call a rich simple syrup. Okay. So um, you're making simple syrup at home. The easiest way to do it to make it the most versatile would be a 50-50 measure of hot water or water and sugar, and then you can boil it on your stove if you'd like. Um, hot is, water works is that just a as well. Pour? Simple syrup as opposed to a rich simple syrup? <laughs> That's good. No, it's just a regular simple syrup. Okay. So that's um, a, yeah, we don't try to apply any kind of class. It's more the there. my side of the tracks. Yeah, simple <laughs> right. syrup, yeah. Right. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with this, our simple syrup. Um, we're going to do about 0.75. Okay. I like my margarita a little sweeter. Okay. 0.5 is a good place to start, and then you can always make it sweeter. So you can go up from there. So simple syrup in. So on any of these, if I'm making these at home, I can adjust up and down. You know, like you said, try one and then mix it up and down and then try yeah. the second one and guarantee the seventh one is going to be the <laughs> it's best. It's always right? the best one, yeah. yeah. And um, it might be good to, to like take notes while you're doing this too, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. So that after the seventh one, you can remember what you, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And I think, you know, and that's really what a lot of what we do when we cocktail is we actually write down a lot of what we're doing. Um, for two reasons. Number one, because it helps you develop, okay, if I go back to this cocktail, I want to find something that's similar to this, mm -hmm. you know, cocktail A for the one that I'm trying to design now. Um, however, as you move on, you're going to know, okay, if that cocktail, I liked it that way, this one's a similar contribution, so I'm going to add that, you know, do those similar measurements here. Okay. I know that's a little confusing, but uh, it, it works out well as you kind of learn your palate, learn what you're trying to do. Um, especially when you're going from making a margarita to perhaps a daiquiri or a whiskey sour, those liquors themselves add sweetness or whatever, other right. flavors as well. So we're into the margarita. Yeah, so margarita, so we've got our simple syrup in there. Right. Now, we're going to go ahead and smell it again. Ooh, now ooh. it just smells like sweet tequila. I mean, you can really smell yeah, the addition yeah. of the sugar yeah. in there. That does. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It almost has sort of a honey or more of an agave, I guess, right. like agave nectar. So you should totally try this up. at home. You know, put the first ingredient in, smell it. Ooh, tequila. Yeah. And now it's kind of hard to see. One. I can't really show it this way, but you can actually, here, I'll do this a little bit. You can actually see how clear the ice has become. Hopefully, I'm, I'm sure it's hard to see, but right. you can see how clear the ice has become. That's because we're starting to get ice melt already, which is good. Um, so for our house sour, we do a full ounce of our lemon juice, and then we do a half ounce of our lime. Now, lime is going to be stronger than uh, lemon. So lemon's a more soft flavor. Lime's going to have a lot more of that citrus to it. Right. Um, so we're going to do it that way. We're gonna, that's how we do ours. It's a light, nice light balance that still throws the lime juice in there. Uh, we've put that in. Now, the fun part about this is now we have all four parts of our cocktail in there. We have our bitter, we have our sweet, we have our liquor, and our ice is the water. So now, the weird part is there's no smell to that cocktail. Oh, yeah. And now Very it strange. smells like a margarita. Yeah. Right. So now we shake this okay. up. I'm not going to shake it as long because we were standing here talking. Right. So I've already got some melt in there. Um, but so the objective of the shake is to get... So as you're, melt a bit. as you're shaking a cocktail, one of the things that we teach, so you want to kind of put your cocktail shaker together. Mm -hmm. So you have a straight edge here mm -hmm. and then sort of your side there, okay, okay. your crooked side there. Uh, this is a Boston shaker. We'll talk more about that in another episode. These are weighted, um, so that makes it a little easier for us to control on the bar side. That's a personal preference thing. It's okay. just what I enjoy. Right. My bartenders seem to like yeah, it. Yeah, and we'll get into that. Yeah, right. um, but when we shake, we kind of want to go in a bit of a circle so that we're hitting ev every surface of this shaker, of this inside of the shaker that we can. So we go in kind of a circle. Okay. Another pro tip, um, when you're shaking your cocktail, be mindful of who's behind you. So pick an enemy target, shake that uh -huh. way, because right. if it comes apart, that's who you're going to hit. It comes loose yeah. right there. Yep. That'll, so that'll then we happen. have our, our straight side here. We'll pop that open. Right. It comes right open easy if, you, if you've done it a time or two. Use our Hawthorne strainer, and we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about those one. in tools. Now, I don't like to use the ice that's in the shaker okay. because I've already damaged it. I've already increased the surface area of that ice. I don't want to dilute this further than already has happened. Gotcha. So I want to put fresh ice in the glass there. Right. Nice, clean glass, fresh ice. We'll go ahead and, and pour so now that we've over got top. that experience set up where you've got your first pour, and then as you work your way through this drink, unless you're me, then you're going to take your time, and the ice is going to melt a little bit, and it's going to change the flavor of yeah, the cocktail. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, now that's a very basic margarita. Um, we'll go ahead and garnish it 
with our lime. Now, would garnish also be the salt on the rim that you get at the Mexican restaurant? Yep, you can garnish it okay. with salt. Sugar's another great one. Um, you really? can also, yeah, sugar's a great thing for, for margaritas. Think I've yeah. I've never tried sugar. Yeah, margarita. sugar's okay. really good, especially if you're doing something like um, an Añejo tequila. Actually, goes pretty well with sugar. Um, oh. You can also do. Um, hey, Chip, we have tequila. Or, uh, sugar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, you can also do if you're using like a mezcal. Right. Um, that's traditionally served with an orange, so okay. a little more of a sweet side there. Right. Um, so yeah, that's our pretty basic that margarita. That is the basic yeah. margarita. Yeah. All right. And you can tell oh, me how this yeah. came out. You're gonna hand that to me. I'm right. Gonna... Oh yeah. That is that is nice. Should have right? a nice soft balance. So this is one you can absolutely make at home with all the fresh ingredients and everything, and be able to make this for your guest. And that's a, a step up from the margarita mix you're going to get at the grocery store on the bottom shelf. Of Correct. Yeah. And, but and, it's yeah. over. It's you know it's it's quality over convenience, right? So there's something to be said for the Jose Cuervo just add tequila because that's all you're doing, you know. Right. So it's super and, you know. simple. So one of the things that we talk about with lemon and lime juice, um, you know, you can use the Jose Cuervo. You can also mm -hmm. do um, if you use a lemon or lime juice from Concentrate that you would get from Harris Teeter or your local grocery sure. store or wherever. You're, um, I find that a little more sugar is helpful because it kind of takes a little bit of that artificial taste out of the lemon and lime. Okay. So you can still be quite successful if you don't want to hand squeeze lemons and limes. Mm -hmm. You can still produce a very, very good cocktail that's not with necessarily a, a, a sour mix that you right. would get from a bar supply okay. store or something like that. So that's our basic margarita yeah. kind of upscaled a bit. Right. right, yeah, yeah. So, all right, so now you mentioned that, given our, our base lesson of we have four parts to a cocktail, right? right. We, have our, we have our water, we have our sweet, we have our sour, and then we have our booze. Yep. And what you're saying is we can basically do the same thing with the other three parts but with a different liquor? Exactly. So the, one of the easy adjustments that we'll make, we're going to go ahead and throw our ice in here. Okay. We'll so do just our, like we did before. Yep, we'll do our same measures here. So I'm actually going to pull back and go to a half ounce of simple syrup. So this time you're doing the bitter and the sweet first. Yep, well, okay. yeah. It's, it's So the easier way to make cocktails, and if you're practicing at home, um, I did that one just to as we could feature the tequila. Right, right. Um, always start with your cheapest ingredients first, because if you make a mistake, you're throwing out sugar water. Right, now you're sugar not pouring water. out expensive booze. Yeah, you're pouring okay, out sugar water enough. and not booze, yeah. Um, so then we're going to go with our lemon. Put that in there. Then we'll go with our lime. And it's the same measurements you did before. Yep, exact so, same yeah. measurements. So okay. I'm sorry, yeah. So uh, I guess for radio purposes, we should probably talk about well, that. Well, you know, he's, yeah. <laughs> and, if, and if you ever do want to see the video, I'll just uh, stop for a second and mention it while we're there. There you go. If you're listening to us on the podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can be able to see the video of us creating this. And it's not nearly as, as fun as the picture you paint in your head when you're just listening to us. <laughs> but, you know, hey, here it is. It's like watching the behind the scenes. Um, but, yeah, so he added, you added the same ingredients. Yep, same in ingredients. In the same measurements to the shaker. We haven't and we have not added liquor yet. Correct. We haven't okay. added liquor yet. Now what's actually fun is because we haven't added the liquor yet, we can give that a smell, and that's got a very sweet, sour smell that's to a, it. It's it's like it's candy. It's like a candy, yeah, like a sour patch candy. Right, actually. right, totally. That's yeah. that's what I was going yeah, for. You yeah, want like, like one that, of those sweet and sour candies. Yeah, that's exactly the smell that we're going for there. Now we have a nice balance, but what's bringing all that together is going to be our final ingredient. So we've gone from a margarita. Right. We're now using uh, Muddy River Distilling here in North Carolina. We're going to use mm -hmm. their silver rum. Um, very, very, very good rum. I love it. So we're going to do a full one measure for us, which again is an ounce and a half on our big side of our jigger here. Okay. Pour that in. Add that to our shaker. Now, we haven't let it sit as long as we did our uh, tequila, but we'll give it just a quick stir. And again... Still has a bit of sweetness to it, but it's got yeah. But you can but you can definitely smell the alcohol. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. So and, and but we've you got a more balance. Bird, yeah, if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. So now as we shake this up, right. again we kind of want to go in a nice little circle or oval right. or whatever you want to call it. Right. I'm sure this is hard and to if, hear. If you're mic, if you're gonna want to see what he's doing in the oval, you're gonna have to go to YouTube. Right. right. Yeah. So, Some of this only works visually. That's true. That's true. We can try to describe it while he's going right, left, yeah. right, left, right, <laughs> left, right, left. Yeah. Uh, another thing to pay attention to is everybody has a face that they make when they shake cocktails those are spectacular. yeah yeah it's, it's, it's always it's, fun i i yeah because i don't want to say it's like an o face but it but it, really it is, is. Yeah, yeah absolutely now we've lost See, our smell. that smells lovely yeah isn't it crazy yeah. that smells like what we're looking for but that still has that same it, it it's very reminiscent of that margarita yeah 
Yeah, it's a, because that, now because we know we've achieved a balance. Yeah. Okay. We know that we've achieved a balance. Throw our Hawthorne strainer back on top of our uh, pork. And again, you're not using the same ice because that's used up ice. And Correct. So now you yeah. want fresh ice. Yep. Organic ice. Yeah, absolutely. Homemade, farm, homemade, farm, farm grown. Farm raised. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so we've got our we've got our drink now. Now, what do you garnish that one with? The so same now, thing, lime. If I'm using a sour mix, I'm gonna typically use a lime, um, especially since we're in a 101 style course. Mm -hmm. You're going to have one set of citrus. I don't want to send people out for all these different ingredients to try and make all these different sure. cocktails, right? So this, in my mind, people always say, well, what are the basic things I need to, to make my home bar? What do I need to do to make this mm -hmm. successful? And realistically, all you have to do is have your favorite liquor, your bitter and sweet, which mm -hmm. you can make the sugar water, you know, the simple syrup. Yeah, and we're, we're going to get to that here in a second. Yeah, your lemon and lime, and you're done. You really don't need all the extra stuff. Now, you can obviously dress these up as you'd like. Right. Um, you can switch out, you know, simple syrup for agave nectar and a but margarita. But that's for later episodes, and we're yeah. going to get into the more advanced things, but be in the basic foundation level class. Right. That now you should be able to make a great margarita at yeah. home. And or, here, we have a daiquiri. Yeah, and you'll or, notice, it's, I guess it's going to be really hard to see, but for us, we can really see the color. The daiquiri yeah. comes in YouTube, a lot lighter. It. Yeah. it is. It's a little bit lighter, yeah, and I hope that shows lighter. up. Right. Yeah, I hope so. And, um, but and you me can being see. a rum guy, this, yeah. this is going to be the one I like. So our uh, our margarita came out oh, right Oh, damn. That's I'm sitting that right keep over that one. here. Right. Yeah, I'm going to hang on to that one. All right. So now we've So now you can do the same thing with whiskey? Yeah. Now, I do make one adjustment to my whiskey sour. Okay. Okay. So with my and whiskey. Then, so, so we got daiquiri, margarita, yep. now whiskey sour, but it's the same process, same mixes and yeah, everything. Yeah, it's, it's really is. Liquor. So you can do okay. all of that. Um, but I'm going to introduce another ingredient um, okay. that is a little different for us. We're actually going to use Angostura bitters. We've got it in a nice little dropper here. Um, so I'm going to add my bitter in the form of Angostura bitters. I'm going to up the bitter level. Okay. The reason why is because these, um, most whiskeys, um, and I'm going to be using uh, Quinn's whiskey. Right. From Great Wagon Road in North Hi, Carolina. Hi, Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Three mentions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And we got Robbie one from uh, That's right. From we got Muddy Robbie River, one so. from Muddy River. Yeah. Uh, we just, again, we really like our local liquors. We try to yeah. do as much as we can. And um, we're going to feature these guys. Very soon, we're going to head over. We're actually going to do an on-location uh, podcast. That's the plan. And we'll head over to Muddy River, and we'll head over to... to Great Wagon Road. I yep. always mess it, mess it up when I try to pronounce all these distilleries names. Exactly. Yeah, It's uh, so we'll start out here. We'll do the same thing. Again, I'm going to make a small adjustment in okay. our daiquiri because rum is a sugar-based alcohol. Our daiquiri, I pulled my measurement back from 0.75 simple syrup down to half an ounce, okay. 0.5. Um, I'm going to re-up that because while the whiskey is delicious, it doesn't have the same kind of sugary sweetness that the rum does. So I'm going to add that in in the form okay. of simple syrup. Fair enough. So I'll put that in. And we're still in the shaker, still the same way we did yep. before. We put the ice in the shaker. Now, for the for the sake of noise, I'm not actually, haven't been dumping my shaker every time. However, I always, always, always recommend sort of clean as you go. It's a, you know, anybody that's worked in restaurants knows yeah, this. Right. And, yeah, anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put in three hearty dashes there, four hearty dashes. Um, and what that's, I'm going to mix this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to find the, uh, we're going to find a nice sort of oaky smell. Yeah, that that it's Angostura a weird, adds. It's, it's very different than the smell from the other ones because the right. other ones were that Sour Patch Kid kind of, kind of candy. Yeah. This is not that. Yeah, right, okay. exactly. So now we'll add in our Quinn's Irish whiskey. Okay. So I'm going to do a full measure for us again, ounce and a half. Absolutely. Yep. And so we try to build all of our cocktails so they have a nice kind of standard ounce and a half that we go back to every time, right. just so that that way it's easy for us. Um, so, so with the the recipes on this, and, and you know, because if I'm at home and I've got whiskey and I'm you know even with the measuring cup, I'm going to go. Well, you know, I'm going to try to want to add a little bit more. The, yeah. the impulse is going to be there. Right. But what it would do is, would it would it unbalance the cocktail? Uh, yeah, yes, that? but again, you're looking for what you want. Yes, in my opinion, yes, it would. We, okay. we teach this class so that it's a nice, so balanced cocktail. So the cocktail. better thing wouldn't be to add more liquor to the one drink. Just keep the recipe the same and have more drinks. And he, Yeah, what I would do okay. is make it this way, and then you know what flavor you're looking for. You can just mm -hmm. up that particular flavor. Okay. If you make it that way, and go, oh, well, I know I'm going to want more liquor, right. you may not. Not, and you'll never know if you don't make it the base okay. way first. Yeah, don't just then, add more booze correct. just because you know you want to make it. I want to make it. I want to get drunk faster. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and actually, I have a question later that's on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Very good. Well, 
We had that, uh, now that we've let it sit a little bit, we had that oaky smell from the Angostura. Right. Now we've kind of lost it again. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and that again, that indicates balance to That's me. That's because the ice is melting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the ice okay. is melted. Everything's sort of mingled. We've added in our liquor. Everything's in there nice and set. Right. So we're going to do this here. Now, while I'm shaking this, there are some really cool mixology level things, mm -hmm. two, 102 and, you know, as we go sure. on, um, that you can do. One of the things that we like to do with egg whites is, or with uh, whiskey sour is actually egg whites. So frothing egg whites and doing dry shakes and... All these other terms that are for other wow. lessons, but yeah, okay. it's actually yeah. really, really so that's, cool. that's in the uh, that's in the master's classes. Correct, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, a much And a you much know what? If we don't get canceled, then we're going to cover all that stuff. <laughs> right. Because you do know how to do all that stuff. Uh, right? Yes, okay. I do. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we're totally going to cover this. There's books on everything. So, <laughs> except for that procrastination book I'm still working on. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, one of the other things, too, as you've seen me pour these out, if you're watching the YouTube channel, um, I've poured the entire cocktail in. I, this is definitely just a pet peeve for me. I don't, for some reason, always put the very last little bit uh, in a cocktail, especially if I'm talking to someone as we're going. Um, for me, I just don't want all that little bits of ice and water and all that to go directly into my cocktail. So if your bartender ever has, goes to throw out the, mm -hmm. the tin and they throw a little bit out, don't think that they're shorting you on your drink because, you know, we measure this for a mm -hmm. full glass. But if, you know, it, it's going to be kind of hard to see. But as we do this... You can kind of see, I guess we can, but there's only a little see, swallow left. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it's very and it thin looks very different, yeah. right? Okay. So and that's not really what we want. So, so it's the dredges. Yeah, it's okay. yeah. Again, I would uh, with this one, I'm going to garnish it with a lime because again, we're home bartending. I'm not in my bar. Right. I would typically garnish this with a really? lemon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> theater of the mind. Theater and, of the mind. Yeah, and, You're, and, okay. and YouTube. But um, I'm going to start on this one because this is one of my favorite. Drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Whiskey sours are. Or definitely is jam. My but jam, you know but what? such a big difference. You don't from have anything I can catch by mouth, right? No, <laughs> not twice. <And> that's um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's awesome. That yeah, is really and it's great. it's really cool because now in these three cocktails, and I'm going to take that one because I'm mm -hmm. thinking I'll come back with a nub. But um, in these three cocktails, we have our margarita, very very simple, right. tequila, sour Here, mix. We'll line them up for yeah. the video though. Yeah, and you can yeah. see the really cool different colors in each of these cocktails. Right. That I think is just so very cool. But so. they're all with the with the uh, the four parts of the cocktail. The only thing you've changed in this, besides a little bit of the measurements here and there, are the liquors. Yeah. So now you can go to your base liquor and go, man, I love tequila. That's what I like. Then that's the drink you're going to want. Yeah, if you're absolutely. like me and you go, man, rum is my jam, then this is why Robbie likes me. Then you go with the rum drink. <laughs> exactly. Or if you're a whiskey guy, which you are, mm -hmm. then that's what you're going to go with. Okay. Yeah. And so, and again, I said in the beginning of this, and I still stick to it, um, make it with the standard measurements. So an, a 0 0.75 of your simple syrup, uh, two measures of lemon to every measure of lime, and then a one and a half measure uh, of your spirit. Do that. I know that I made some adjustments, mm -hmm. and the reason why I made adjustments was so that I could talk about the adjustments that I made for sweet, bitter, whatever it is. Um, our rum being a more sweet cocktail, our mm -hmm. margarita being very balanced, and then our whiskey being a more bitter cocktail. Um, because well, of rum the being made from a sugar. And, Correct. Yeah, right. Okay. So that balance... You know, the margarita being the most balanced of those, you can really see where you end up going in different levels. So I really recommend, again, make it the way that, you know, we've kind of taught it here and then make your adjustments. And I promise you, at whatever your next bar party is going to be, when you're at the next place you're going oh, yeah. to, you can make all these adjustments. You're going to be the pro. You're going to be, check the shit out. I yeah. learned this from a podcast. That's all right. right. That's nice right. Nice work, dude. So. All right. So there we go. That, that completes our four parts of the cocktail. And if you have questions for Brandon on any of the stuff as you're watching it, you can email us. It's at thebigbooth at stumptownstation.com. And you can email us anytime you want to. We'll, we'll answer you on email. And we may even read your question on the air. Or on the, on the air. <laughs> on, that, well, on the podcast. That's, I'm going all old school that's now. That's right. All right. So... We go to our we go to my personal favorite part of every episode, and that now, is the Q and A with Brandon. I think this is actually Brandon. important because when we first started this podcast, I told Brian it was important to me to know the questions before we started so that I could have good and intelligent answers. Uh, he vehemently disagreed and doesn't allow me to see these That's questions. That's exactly beforehand. right. <laughs> so I don't actually know what's coming. Nope. Which, yeah, this is this is the part that actually does make me nervous. From uh -huh. time. And it's so, good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this daiquiri while we're while we're you know. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Mm. It's a delicious cocktail. It is. It's a very good cocktail. All right. So I've only got three questions this week for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make it easy on you. Uh, Steve from Scotland. He wants to know, okay, he's heard of bartender ears. So yeah. you ever you ever been down at the end of the bar and then all of a sudden the bartender jumps up, but then you're yelling at them and they ignore you. 
bartender ears. So yeah. can you really hear everything? Are you really being ignored at that point? Uh, but, but can you really hear everything that's going on in the bar? Yeah, it's a really astonishing thing that happens. Um, bars are built so that your experience on that side is fantastic and operations back here can continue. So um, all of the speakers exist above us so the sound comes out. Everything happens that, you know, in a different way on our side of the bar. We also don't have people speaking to us from every angle. They're only coming from one place. Mm -hmm. So when we really have to focus on, okay, I need to listen for my name or I need to listen for somebody to call out or whatever it is, we know it's going to come from in front of us. So mm -hmm. it really is a wild thing because I can very much hear people a row or two rows back when we're very busy. I can actually hear people from wherever, especially during mask mandates and all that. Um, it still works out pretty well. So yeah, bartender ears are a very real thing. Okay. Um, and just don't ask my wife because they don't they come off when I leave home or when I go home. Ah, you're so, right. Yeah, I so then you can't that. hear from the other yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> but, uh, and that's part of marriage is yelling at each other from the other side of the room. What? Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Happens. But so, yeah, bartender ears is a very real thing. Okay. It's a weird so phenomenon. It's, it's, and, and as a musician, I get that because if, uh, you know when you're when you're playing music, the sound on stage when you've got monitors and your different mixes sounds very different than it does in the house. Yeah, and so that makes sense. I never even thought about that. That, yeah. that you're sort of in a in a bubble over here where the sound is coming in a little different. Yeah, and the really fun part, I would say, you know, for those lucky enough to subscribe to our podcast and our right. YouTube channel. Um, you'd be astonished how much of the conversation we can hear that you don't intend. <laughs> All right. It's really a lot of fun. So, that yeah. is good to know. Yeah, There's so your tip. We very much know right. what you think of us when we're not looking. <laughs> That's right. God, look at that bastard over there. He didn't bring me, a, to bring, bring me a margarita. Yeah. All right. I have another one for you. Now, this one's kind of cool. Brookie from New Jersey wants to know, what celebrities would you like to see at the bar? And then a second part, what celebrities have come into the bar? Oh, gosh. Uh, we've actually had... Uh, a lot of musicians in here, which is pretty cool. Um, we've had. Uh, now, if you don't want to drop names, yeah, you know, yeah that's okay, yeah. right? Yeah, we've uh, we have uh, we have one of the uh, uh, one of the musicians from a very popular rock band okay. has come in here from time to time. All hard right. rock band, which is pretty cool. Um, we have some motocross guys that come in here. We've got a lot of rugby players that come in here. Um, we get a lot here throughout okay. Charlotte. Yeah. Um, let alone, you know, we've got, you know, we had uh, a Panthers player was in here at one point. Right. Um, so we've had a lot of really cool folks in. Right. Um, got some friends in uh, in the movie industry that right. might want to bring some friends in. So yeah. Okay. Got, so yeah. so then the back to the first part of that question, since we have the internet megaphone here. Yeah. If there's a celebrity that you would love to see come into the bar and be able to show off and serve a cocktail, who would it be? Judy Dench. Judy Dench. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that is a great answer. I, yeah, I, I mean, kind of dig that. Dame that would Judy be fun. Dench, why not? All right, yeah, so it'd be great. Dame Judy Dench, yeah. you're invited. Anytime. Stumptown Station. The Margarita's on me. The flight's on you. It'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, it'd be a good one. Yeah, because yeah. that is an expensive flight. All right, so I've got one more question for okay. you. It's from Kara from Charlotte. So, and this kind of goes back to our, our, our my thing about pouring more liquor into it, mm -hmm. right? So you go into a bar and you always hear people, or maybe you've done it yourselves, the folks that are listening. How do you get a bartender? I want to make it. Make it strong. How do I get it strong? Yeah. Um, let me tell you the right way to do it. The right way to do it is order a double. That's just the way to do okay. it. Okay. Um, let me make, let me use my skill set to make you a drink that tastes great. And then in a double, like in this scenario mm -hmm. where you made that margarita, now instead of that glass, now you're going to make it a pint glass and you're basically doubling all your ingredients. Uh, I'm actually going to ask you that question. Okay. So that's a tall. There's a difference between a double and a tall. So uh, one of my favorite drinks is a Quins and Coke single shot tall glass. That's what I asked. Okay. Single shot, tall glass. So um, I don't want it as, if, if, to me, when somebody mm -hmm. orders a double, I'm going to make it here with, a, with no further instructions. With the instruction smaller glass. Because okay. And you're just going to add mind, another, shot of, uh, because, another shot of whatever liquor it is. Yeah, because based in, based in the root of the question, how do I get a stronger drink? If I put mm -hmm. it in a pint glass, you're just getting more of the same. Fair enough. Right. Okay, so, so I if could you make, want a stronger drink, then you can buy an extra shot. Get it to as a go double. It. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you want a, if you want more of a drink to not go to the bar as often because mm -hmm. it's busy or whatever, a double tall is going to be two cocktails in a pint glass. A double is going to be two shots with the same in amount the of mixer glass. as a standard. Okay. That's a big difference. So yeah, bar. So lingo. If you're looking for strength versus longevity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's a great right. way to put it. Yeah. yeah. So a strong drink is going to be a double. A long-lasting drink is going to be a double tall. One of our crew was just talking about strength versus longevity earlier, and that's, yeah, 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 that's yeah. why I thought about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I mean, I think that that, and, and we could probably do 
honestly a whole episode on bar lingo and how to order. I mean, I think that's a big thing. Um, and that's are, a good yeah. one. Yeah. So now the other thing with that, and I guess that so the, the right way to do it is order double. Right. Um, there are also bar tricks, right? Mm -hmm. When you go in, you know, order your first drink, tip on your first drink. You know, make sure the bartender knows mm -hmm. that you're going to be coming back up. Do all of those things that make sense. Right. Make your orders make sense. You know, order everything together. Don't pull the order of, yeah, I'm going to get a Guinness. And what did you need? Okay, no, they don't, no, they, yeah, no, uh, uh, and just, obviously that ends up taking a very that, long time. Yeah, that's actually a great episode idea. Yeah. That maybe is what we'll do, is we'll do all the horrible examples of yeah. how to not order drinks at yeah. a bar. There's, okay, there's that's just a, a bunch that's of a ways. One. But yeah, I think that, that really would be, you know, etiquette on your side begets etiquette on our side. Right. And then knowing what it is that you want, double up or Longevity. See, yeah. That Q and A wasn't so hard. It was not. It was See? good. Yeah. I'll yeah. try to. I'll try to make it harder next and time. And I'll tell you what. If Judy Dent shows up, boy. Woo! That'll it will fun. be on our social media. You bet your ass. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, uh, Miss Miss Dame Judy. Uh, Dame, <laughs> Dame Judy. I don't. I don't I'm not English, so I don't know how you refer to him. But we'll, yeah. we'll send Steve a message if, from but Scotland. But if you do come and you know. don't want to be on social media, I mean, we can arrange that too. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hey, thanks for watching our episode two, the four parts of a cocktail. Now in episode three, we're going to get into garnishing tools, right? Yeah. So we'll start talking about some of the tools that you're using up here and like what in the, you know, the, <laughs> the biggest question, the I, Triton. Yeah. The biggest. Um, yeah. So we, we've got all these tools. We'll figure out what those are. Yeah. Um, and how you guys use them. Because if you're going to do these home cocktails and you're going to apply these four parts of a cocktail uh, uh, methodology at home to really up your game for your home parties, then you're going to want to make sure you have the right tools and where to get them and what they're called yep. and, and all and how to use them. Yeah. Right. And how besides, to add, yeah, how to add flavor and flavor. Stabbing people with, yeah. with the trident. And people always ask why the bar spoon is twisted. Why does it have a spiral? And we'll talk about that. That's one of the hey, most popular questions. That's so. another one, man. That's yeah. two in one episode. A yeah. teaser. Yeah, that's, Look right. At that. that's right. So tune in next time. Episode three of the Big Booth podcast. Assuming we're not canceled, send us feedback. The Big Booth at StumptownStation.com. And you know what? Hang on. Where's my drink? We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.